let's see what happens when we put our faith in action. So I want you to unbuckle for me. Yep, it is that time. And now let's float around a bit. And hey, show me what it looks like to eat cereal in anti-gravity mode. What would that look like for you? Maybe like. Ooh, ooh, you gotta be careful. You get milk in your eye. <laughs> okay, now show me what it would look like to jump rope in anti-gravity mode. Maybe something like this really hard to keep that rope down, you know, no gravity and all. Anyways, very good, very good. All right, so here on Saturn, the best part, of course, is the seven rings. And the best part about the seven rings is that you can spin on them. Now, before we spin though, we do have to warm up because these rings are made of chunks of ice and rock. So, warm up, rub your hands together like this for me and then breathe like this. All right, rub them together and breathe. All right, perfect. We're now all warmed up. Now I want your hands by your side like you're a spinning top. And hey, let's have a little fun with this, all right? Let's do one leg and spin around. Very good, very good, very good. Ooh, let's have a warm up break, all right? Rub those hands together and breathe. All right, other leg and other way. Spin around, spin around, spin around. Oh, switch, spin around. Oh, switch one more time. All right, that was fun, but I gotta take a little bit of a dizzy break. Uh-oh, what's that noise? Oh man, it looks like you guys have a leak in your energy tank. This, this isn't good. You're not gonna have enough energy to get back home, so. It looks like, well, you're stuck in space. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, you're not. I mean, a Z shuttle power up is not gonna get you out of this one. You would be dancing for a long time. Eight years, remember? And besides, the more energy you put in, it'll just leak right out because, well, we can't fix this leak in space. It has to be done on Earth. Anyways. Don't worry, I know exactly what to do. Our second space specialist, she is on vacation, but before I became flight director, I was the second space specialist. So I am gonna get you home. Okay, astronauts, now as you know, the point to all of our missions is to take one small step towards our big God. Now, I'll be honest with you. Did I think getting stuck in space is how we would be taking that step? No, but we're here, so let's get to taking that step. Now, of course, all of our data is found in stories from the Bible, our best source for data. And the answer to the situation that you're in can be found in the question, what does it take to make our faith come alive? Well, James 2.17 tells us this. In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. So what do we need to make our faith come alive? action. And as we know, your ship could use some of that right now. So I'm going to take us to a story found in Matthew 26, where Peter witnesses Jesus get arrested for saying that he was the son of God. Now, Peter follows Jesus and those that arrested him to a courtyard, and he sits with some servants so he can see what's happening to Jesus. And while he's there, the servants around him accuse him of having been with Jesus and of being a follower of Jesus. Now, even though Peter was one of Jesus's closest friends, he denies ever knowing Jesus or ever being with him. Now, later on, Peter realizes what he's done and the Bible says that he wept bitterly. He was definitely not putting his faith into action. But that's okay because Peter's story isn't over yet. Nope, we learn later that Peter would take one small step towards our big God. And in the book of Acts, we learn that after Jesus' death and resurrection, Peter would go on to dedicate his life to the church and sharing Jesus with others. In fact, he shared Jesus with 3,000 people. 3,000, you guys, that's huge. He was definitely putting his faith into action. You could say that his faith exploded. Now that takes me to our experiment that's gonna help you get back home.
Thank you, Emily. All right, first we are gonna need some hot water. And our hot water is gonna represent Peter. Now, if you know anything about Peter, that's pretty fitting because, well, he was really bold. So next, we are gonna use liquid nitrogen, which is the ingredient that makes this whole thing work. Liquid nitrogen represents our faith. And the thing about our faith is, remember guys, we wanna put it to action. We don't wanna just have it and do nothing with it. So let's see what happens when we put our faith in action. Here we go. Now that was some action right there. Thank you, Miss Emily, for your help. All right, now guys, James 122 says this, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. Once we're saved, we have to put our faith into action. And we can do that by praying, reading our Bible and doing what it says, serving others and sharing Jesus with others, just to name a few. Now, when we put our faith into action, it causes a reaction that can spread throughout the entire world. I mean, when Peter put his faith into action, remember, he reached 3,000 people. So who's to say that you couldn't reach that many people too? All you gotta do is put your faith in action. So I want you to think about it. How are you gonna put your faith into action today? All right, astronauts, this is what you need to give you a boost to get back home. All right, well, before we go, we have to do our big idea one last time. So everybody, up on your feet, up on your feet. Do it with me. Here we go. Biggest you've ever done. Here we go. On the count of three. One, two, three. One small step towards a big God. Incredible. Amazing. You guys are amazing. And listen, whether it's here on Earth or up in space, I'll see you around.